si Tim Tim nakakaiyak naman. So, yeah, that is a blessing. Amen? English pa talaga dapat. <laughs> Hello, brother Gabriel. So, shall we uh, all send it in your Bibles, please, in the book of Ecclesiastes? Uh, I don't know why every time I stand behind the pulpit, uh, I'm always nervous. Very nervous. Are you there, man? Ecclesiastes chapter 11. We're going to read the whole uh, chapter of Ecclesiastes. Are you there, man? So, so let us read Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses number 1 to 10. Please begin. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south, or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the cloud shall not reap. For as thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not whether it shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Truly the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years, and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, uh, which shall be many, all that cometh in vain. Rejoice, O young man, and thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in, in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou, but for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and And let's jump to uh, chapter 12, verse number 13 and 14. Let us jump there. Please begin. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you once again for this opportunity, this great privilege, Lord, to speak to your people. Please be the one to help us, and Lord, give us the understanding, and may your grace, mercy, and goodness be upon us, Lord, as we continue to study your word. Help me as well, Lord. Uh, Empower me and uh, give me, Lord God, the wisdom that comes from you. Lord, thank you so much. This is all as in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Please be seated. Actually, I have already prepared a message, uh, a series about Abram. But uh, I decided to change the topic that I'm going to uh, share to you this morning and uh, because I know there is a need. Amen. Now, every day uh, we are always uh, facing challenges and uh, we're always uh, facing, uh, facing this, what we call uh, difficulties that we have to overcome. And I know that uh, by the grace of God, everything will be all right. Amen. Amen. And uh, let us also include in our prayers Pastor Joel and Sister Bell. Uh, by the grace of God, uh, God uh, has been using our pastor right now. And he'll be preaching uh, by uh, the next day, it'll be tomorrow. Uh, let us uh, include him in our prayers and also Teacher Mabel. I think uh, 
they've done uh, going to Libmanan, Lima, am I right? Yeah. And uh, that's also included in our prayers, Pastor Nathan. And also Sister Jalil and uh, JL. Let's include them in our prayer. I think uh, JL now is fine, right? Okay. Sino sa pladahan ako? Nagpunta ako doon, itinulugan lang ako. Tawag JL. Dinilatan lang, natulog ulit. Anyway, later on, uh, ilang weeks lang, eh, makakausap na natin siya. Okay, so this morning we'll be studying about the meaning of life. So, the question is, is life worth living? That is the question that uh, has been passed to us and uh, is always given to us by many of uh, people who are uh, around us. So that is the question that the preacher raised when he began to have a discourse here in Ecclesiastes that was written by none other than King Solomon. So after in investigating everything, the, uh, King Solomon said that everything is a vanity. Amen? Everything is vanity. Everything is in vain without the work of God in our lives. So simply means that it is what we call futility. It is what we call useless. Our wealth, our possessions that we will have here on earth will be useless. Everything is useless. But of course, as we uh, continue to live, we need these things in life. Amen? But again, everything is useless because we cannot bring all of this to heaven. Now, being a wise man, and that is a Solomon, he reviewed these arguments this time and he now uh, put this, what he called the difference in this, what he called uh, life. He thought that life is just monotonous. He, he thought that life is just have this, what he called uh, lack of variety. Or what called lack of interest. But here, uh, King Solomon uh, taught us, according to uh, in, uh, his writing here in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, that life without God is useless. Amen? It's useless. Now, though man's wisdom couldn't explain everything, Solomon concluded that it is better to follow God's wisdom than to practice God's folly. And that is the truth. And that is the reality. As for certainty of death, there is no way to escape it. Amen? Even though you have everything in life, but you cannot escape death. And it ought to motivate us to enjoy life right now that God has given to us. We have to use this for His work. We have to use this for His glory. And not for our own. And we have to take note as well that we have to use most of the opportunities that God has given to us. Now everything. Now the meaning of life. Now let us study here about three things. We're not going to uh, take a uh, long on this. Actually, I decided uh, to just to get your uh, email address and then just send all of those out plan there and then we'll just close in prayer. Amen? Amen. I joke lang narinig ni Pastor. Testing lang, testing. Number one, in verses number one to six, it says here, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many Days. Number one, we have to understand that life is challenging. Amen. Life is challenging. Now, before I became a uh, basketball fanatic, I, my sport is baseball. Because in Bukidnon, uh, the number, number one sport there is baseball, not basketball actually. Because... Uh, We've been influenced by uh, most of those American missionaries who started the work there in Bukidnon, and then they love uh, baseball. So, if you will go to Bukidnon, number one sport there is baseball. So when I say baseball during those days, uh, 
It's very challenging. We always have training. When I was in uh, elementary days, we always had a practice after our work class. And then uh, I usually go home late because of those practices. But I believe that those challenges can, uh, I, that I can learn uh, some of those challenges in life. Now, umabot po ako ng national, national barangay game. So nakakatuwa, alalahanin niyo yung mga time na yun. So, and then later on, nag-switch ako ng basketball so, kasi kinuha ako ng Lakers. Okay? So, we can see also here that Solomon uses all those activities to point this out that life is challenging. Amen? Life is challenging. Now, wherever you go, there will always be challenges that you may, will be facing. Hello? Challenging. There will be challenges. Now it says here in, in verses number 1 and 2, Cast thy bread upon the waters that thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. Now Solomon here uh, pointed out two things here. Number one is that and the first point here is that the merchant are uh, sending out his ships here. And then the second one is what he called farming, sowing his seed. Now in both of these, they have those what he called activities. And then a great deal of faith is also required here. Because those merchants nor the farmer can control their circumstances. Okay? They cannot control. The ships might be in reef. The ships might meet storms along the sea or along the ocean or might be attacked by the pirates and all those cargoes will be lost. They cannot control the circumstances. And the same thing with the, par uh, with the farmers. They, there would be a bad weather that may occur. There would be blights or what they call uh, diseases on those plants and also what they call it will destroy those crops. And the labor of the farmer could be in vain. So we cannot control those circumstances. That is why life is always challenging. As you serve, there will be people who will hate you. Yes or no? You cannot please everybody. Amen. Amen. Pakakainin mo na ngayon, ayaw pa sa'yo eh. Ay, hindi ko sinasabi yung kagrupo ko. Well. No, that's life. Kasi sa ayaw mo sa hindi, meron silang bagay na hindi magugustuhan sa'yo. So, so what? These are challenges that you have to accept and face. Life is challenging. Now, however, if the merchant and the farmer waited until the circumstances were ideal, what will happen to them? They would never get any, anything done. Life has a certain amount of risk of it. And that's where faith comes in. Life is challenging. Number one here, we have here, those businessmen or what they call the merchants. And verses number one and two, cast thy bread upon the waters. Maybe paraphrase or what? It says here that send out your grains into the ship or giving your uh, uh, something that you have to the poor or this what they call generosity. Amen? Or philanthropy, I may say. Now it says here, that Solomon himself was also involved in kinds of trades during those days while he was in the throne. So it was natural for him to use this what they call illustrations. Now you can see that in 1 Kings. Let's proceed there. In 1 Kings chapter 10 verse number 15 and 22. Besides that he had of the merchantmen and of the traffic of the spice merchants and of all the kings of Arabia and of the governors 
of the country. And also in verse 22. For the king had at sea a navy of Thar uh, Tharshis with the navy of Hiram. Once in three years came the navy of Tarshish, bringing gold, the trade that King Solomon was doing during those days, and silver, ivory, sabon, ivory, and apes and peacocks. So King Solomon was involved in trade during those days. So it would be months before the ships would return with their what they call precious cargoes. But when they did, the merchant's faith and patience would be rewarded. Once they can return home. Amen? After that, and I believe that along the way, while having their voyage, they encounter a lot of challenges along the sea. Amen? Along the way. But they were able to overcome it. And later on, they receive those reward. And the same thing in verse 2 suggests that he spread out his wealth and not put everything into one venture or a risky journey. Itong problema natin minsan eh. No? Actually, that's business. And you can ask Brother Badong what he's doing in uh, his uh, online business. He's taking a risk, amen. His business might be uh, fine later on, and then later on it'd be uh, bad. Uh, what happened right now, Badong? Okay. So that's business. But again, life, again, after all, true faith is not presumption or like what you call true on the basis of what you call probability. Now, the merchant. Second here, we have to understand that it says here, look at this, in verse uh, 2. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. For thou knowest not. The key, pray, uh, the key praise here is in this section here, in verse 2, in, verses, in verse 5, in verse 6. It says here that man is ignorant of the future. Man doesn't know, but he must not allow his ignorance to make him so fearful that he becomes either careless or paralyzed. He must do an action by having that faith. So a challenging life, you must have what? You must have faith. Live by faith. Well, what's the purpose that we have by God and then you don't have those faith? Don't you know that that is sin? Hey, we have to understand that those challenges that we are facing in life can help us to become mature. For thou knowest not. On the contrary, not knowing the future should make us more careful in what we plan and what we do. We have to be very careful. Especially in making decisions, major decisions, minor decisions, be careful and allow God to work in your life. Allow God's guidance. You have to ask the wisdom of God in doing these things. Because we don't know the future. But we know that God is the one holding it. And we have the assurance. Life is challenging. Again here, it says here, in verse 2, give a portion to seven and also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. Now, because of, we have to understand here that because of some of them, they are bound to bring back. Uh, what you call good return in what you call investment. I'm not saying that making investment is not good. But again, we have to be careful. Sino ba ito mga nahulog sa mga ginto-ginto na yan? 
Ha? Mga nadali sa mga ginto na yan. <laughs> well again, if you will believe God that He will work in your life, God will give you the wisdom on what to do. Kasi tayo, mahilig tayo, ano eh, gusto natin yumaman sa dumami agad ang pera eh. And that is our nature. Amen? Don't tell me, eh, hindi ako ganyan. <laughs> Lahat tayo. For thou knowest not. That's why it says here, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Why? To use all opportunity speculatively because we don't know what calamities may be ahead. Like invest kasi sa bagay, oh may ubos na doon. Thank you, sir. Bibigyan ko lang ng anak. Pagkakasal ko. Mababang 5,000 rin dito eh. Thank you, sir. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, mara- ilan ba sa atin dito ang mga nahulog sa mga ganyan mga networking na yan? Kami nadali din kami ni Sister Lily dun before eh. Good thing, napatigal kami. Wala na rin i-invest eh. <laughs> so, use all opportunity. But we have to be very careful. Second thing, the farmer, verse number 3 to 6. Now, according to Daniel Webster here, said the found uh, farmers are the founders of civilization according to thomas jefferson the chosen people the farmers are the chosen people of god farming has never been easy work and this was especially true in the holy land during those days because the jews need to till the ground the rocky soil and they depended on the early and later rains to nourish their seed. And we have to understand that nobody can predict the weather. Especially right now. Let alone control it. Let, alone, let God control it. And the farmer is, the one, is at the mercy of what they call nature. In verse 3, once again, let's take a look here. If the clouds be of what? Full rain. Now the contrast here, clouds with what you call, clouds are always changing. And they come and go. And the farmer hopes that they will spill their precious water on the fields. Now the, the farmer is always waiting for that. And they stand in the same place waiting for the rain to come in order for their fields to be what? What? Nakalimutan ko rin. Huh? Ano ba? Hirap sa English eh. Para madiligan. Tama? To digs. Kaya yung mga English teacher ko, dapat matuto kayo mga vocabularies. Huh? Digs. Diligan. Digs. But again, it says here that the past cannot be changed, but the present is available to us. And we must size each opportunity. Life is challenging, folks. But don't sit around waiting for the ideal circumstances. Uh, I, will, uh, I will just wait for the right time, the right place. What will happen to you later on? The wind is never right for the sower. And the clouds are never right for the reaper. If you are looking for the excuse for doing nothing, you can find what? Nothing. Hey. Sabi po ni Billy Sunday here. The skin of a reason starve with a lie. Life is challenging and often we must launch out by faith 
even when circumstances seem adverse or unfavorable to us. Let's challenge. Kasi, ewan ko, uh, di ko alam sa iba. Pero, kung gusto mo nalang para, uh, palaging madali ang buhay, walang ka-thrill-thrill eh. But if you want challenge, face it. And pray that God will give you the wisdom. Kasi ganun ang buhay eh. Sino ba dito hindi gusto ng uh, madali? Lahat natin gusto. Yan ang gusto natin sa buhay. But hindi yan ang gusto ng Panginoon. Because God is teaching us. Just as nobody knows the way of the wind. In verse 5, it says here, As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so, thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. So that's it. Oh. So nobody knows the words of God in His creation. You have to understand that God has a time and a purpose for everything. You can see that in chapter 3, verse number 1 to 11, but we're not going to read that anymore. And we must live by faith in His word alone. And not on our might and not on our own wisdom. Life is challenging, folks. Therefore, use each day what? Use each day wisely. That is the commandment of God. Get up early and sow your seed. In Ephesians 5, 15 to 17, please, Brother John. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. See then that he walks circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Amen. Do the job at hand and redeem the time. Amen. Trusting God to bless at least some of those tasks that you have accomplished in life. Trust God. Just as the merchant sends out the one sheep and also the farmer works more than one crop. Life is challenging. Amen? Amen. And each every one of us is like a merchant and each every one of us is like a farmer. Doing our own work for the purpose to glorify God. In Galatians chapter 6 verse number 8 and 9. Galatians 6 is 8 and 9. We're very fam uh, familiar with this, right? For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And verse 9. And let us not be weary in well doing. Amen. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So never give up. Never. Give up. Never give up. Ayun yung kantahin eh. Amen? That's life. So if we are worried about the wind toppling on a tree over on us, or the clouds drenching uh, on the tree or, or us in the rain, we would never accomplish anything. Now, it says here, there is no formula of success. According to the concert pianist Arthur Robert Ting, he said, except perhaps an unconditional acceptance of life and what it brings. But again, there's the form, I, I believe there's a formula of success. And that is what? Have faith in God. Second point. No oras na. Okay. Praise the Lord. Wala garong inantok. Amen. <laughs> Nakakatuwa tingnan dito sa taas eh. Pag may mga inantok eh. Ang cute-cute ng mga mata. Lumalabas sa pagka Chinese eh. Chapter 11 verse number 7 up to chapter 12 verse 8. But we're not going to read the, uh, those verses anymore. 
Okay? The gift of life. And Pastor Joel uh, discussed uh, this topic last time. What are we going to do? Comes from God, and we have to what? Enjoy it. Amen. Enjoy life. Now, this is Solomon 6 and final admonition that we accept life as a gift and learn to enjoy all that God shares with us. Amen. Enjoy. Now, we can see that here in the um, following verses here in chapter uh, 9, verse number 7 to 10. We can see that. Go thy way of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse number 7 to 10. It says here, Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart, for God now accepteth thy works. Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Live what? Joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity. Amen. Those uh, of you who are married, amen. To those unmarried, wait for the right time. Amen. Which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. Verse 10 Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. The gift of life. So we have to what? Enjoy it. Amen. Enjoy it. The Bible tells us here God gave us what He called three instructions here. Let us read. Let's go back again to chapter 11. Chapter 11, verses number 7 to 9. Truly, the light is sweet and a pleasant thing. It is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many, all that cometh in vanity. Rejoice, O young man, man, in the youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of the youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know not that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Number one, we have to understand here the gift of life. This is what they call delight. Delight. So Solomon specially instructed the young people to what? Take advantage of the days of youth before the days of darkness would arrive. Delight. Okay? He was simply making a general say uh, what he called generalization that youth is the line is, is the time of what? For enjoyment. Because once the family na kayo, ibang usapan na yun. Kasi meron na kayong mga responsibility. Amen? Amen. 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 Hey. Why you're still young? Well, Mama shell ka. Puta kang sakrulain. Magpakalaylayo ka. <laughs> Pakasalo. Mamasyal ka. Magukay ka. <laughs> Now, I mean, you have to enjoy life. You're earning money. You have to save. And uh, gastusan mo rin ang iyong sarili. Pakainin mo rin naman yung sarili. Enjoy din mo naman yung blessing na binigay sa iyo ng Panginoon. Huwag yung nandiyong ka sa sulok, bagong sahod ka. Lalabas ka? Hindi. Bagong sahod ka eh. Hindi. Yun, nag-ipon ka na nag-ipon. Noon, nung magkasakit, o, oh, mas malak na gastos. Enjoy. Hindi ko naman sinasabing araw-araw kayo mapunta doon sa mamahalan ng restaurant. But at least, kahit... Bigyan mo rin naman ang time ang uh, sarili mo, yung family. Amen. 
Kami kasi sa sarili, Francis, isang lugar lang pinupuntahan namin, kahit maraming mga kainan dyan eh. Isa lang. Ha? Korea. <laughs> Korea. <laughs> Kayos kayo. <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoy. Kayos kayo ha. Okay. <laughs> so delight. Amen. Okay, <laughs> pop. So young people have to watch their hearts as well and their eyes. Because either or both can lead into what? Them into sin. So we have to be very careful. In choosing a partner, pray that God will give you the wisdom. Choose somebody who loves the Lord. And that person will love you. Kailangan mo yan. Hindi mo naman kinakala na sobrang gwapo eh. <laughs> hindi naman kinakala na sobrang maganda. Anin mo yan kung hindi naman niya mahal ang Panginoon, mahihirapan ka. Mapapalayo ka sa Panginoon. So be careful. The Bible tells us, walk in the ways of your heart. It is not an encouragement to go on a youthful fling or a short period of that what you call enjoyment in life. But it says here, and satisfy the sinful desires within. We have to be very careful. Kasi isa sa pinakamahirap na uh, i-encourage ang mga young people ngayon. Sa totoo lang. Lalo na pag ang ituturo mo ay uh, para sa kanilang kaayusan, mag-iisip yan. Ay, hindi, modern kami ngayon eh. Modern kami. Ngayon mga old-fashioned, ancient fashion. <laughs> Grabe, no? Ancient fashion, no? Ganun, eh. Ganun tayo, eh. But you have to listen. Okay? It is rather a reminder for young people to enjoy the special pleasures that belong to youth and can never be experienced again in quite the same way. Kasi, ang buhay, isang beses lang dumaraan yun, eh. Opportunity. Later on, hindi mo na mababalikan yan. Sayang, sapat sa plus, hinagot ko na siya. Sayang. Science. Nasayangan ka. Kasi yung mga opportunity, pinalipas mo. Sa iyong buhay. <laughs> so give up life. So those of us who are older, need to remember that God expects young people to act like young people. Act. And then, the tragedy is that too many older people are trying to act like young people. Huwag naman na ikaw na may asawa ka, mag astong binata ka. Huwag naman. Mali din naman yun. Amen? Kaya ako, hindi ako komportable pag... Mga kasama mga bata eh. Deep things na kasi ako eh. <laughs> Joke lang. Joke lang. Biro lang. So, simply doon ako sa ka-level ko na may mga may asawa din. Amen? Kasi nakakapagbiroan kami. Mahirap makapagbiroan sa mga ano, uh, hindi mo kaedad din. Mahirap din. Kami ni Gomer, mga jokes namin, mga malalalim yun eh. So, God does not give us all things richly to enjoy. But it is always wrong to enjoy the pleasures of sin. Take note on that. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 po. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not highly minded, uh, high minded, I'm sorry, nor trust in a certain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to what enjoy. Amen? Napakabuti ng Panginoon sa ating buhay, mga kapatid. The young person who enjoys life in the will of God will have nothing to worry about when the Lord returns. Amen po. So, that is life. Another thing, there are things also that we need to remove. In verse 10, it says here, Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart 
and put away evil from thy flesh for childhood and youth are vanity another thing that we have to understand is this privileges must be balanced by what we call personal responsibilities as well young people must put what anxiety out of their hearts or those sorrows in their hearts and evil away from their flesh although we cannot void sometimes because we are still in the flesh but again at least we have to do something na ma-avoid natin ng mga bagay po na ito sorrow simply means here what they call vexation okay inner pain or what they call anxiety and nowadays many people are experiencing this anxiety amen another thing is that uh, those what they call inner pain Siguro meron kayong mga hindi ka bati. Bati na kayo. Love. Kasi mahirap nung maka na dito tayo sa isang church. Maka sa lubong mo, biglang pupunta na ibang daan. Lalo na dyan, sa may hagdan dyan, no? Di mo alam kung tatalon eh. Ayaw, para hindi lang makasalubong yung ayaw. <laughs> But hopefully, magkaayos tayo. Yun naman ang gusto natin. We must have the, that what they call uh, reconciliation. If we are living the will of God, we will have that what? Peace of God in our hearts. Kasi hindi maaring wala kang peace of God. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 6 to 9. Brother John, please. Be careful for nothing but in everything... By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever thing, uh, things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of what of peace shall be with you. So, remember this. The best way to have a happy life or an adult life is what? To get a good start early and avoid the things that will bring trouble later on. Habang maiwasan mo yung bagay na yun na maaga pa, iwasan mo na. So, uh, so that later on, magiging maayos lahat. Hey, we have, we have to be a good starter sa ating buhay. At nagtatapos din tayo sa kaayosan. But hey, huwag mo na tingnan yung mga nakaraan mo. Focus sa present at sa darating ang panahon. Amen? Those things... Uh, Uh, in the past must serve as a lesson for us to go ahead. Huwag mo na, kalimutan. Tapos na yun. Lahat po tayo nagkaroon ng mga nakaran sa buhay. Ako, ikaw, bawat sa atin. And we have to remove those things and live for God for the rest of our lives. Amen? So, this is a challenge to us. The, the phrase means childhood and youth are what you call transient it means lasting only for a short time ngayon napaka ganda mo napaka pogi mo pero lilipas din yan amen titingnan ko yung mga picture ko dati eh, pambihiro kumpleto pa buko <laughs> but that's life yung basketball kami na John ni Cedric ni Gomer, eh, but Alex, ni Mon, the pastor, eh, 
Brother Jun, before, ang bilis kong kumilos. <laughs> Ngayon, wala na. Ang hina, mabagal na akong kumilos. Yung mga malalay dati, yung mga tripo, panis yan eh. Pero hindi shoot yun. Nakatira lang ako. <laughs> but that's life. Kasi, sa ayaw mo sa hindi, lilipas at lilipas ang panahon. Put, uh, puti na buhok mo ngayon. Later on, itim na, di ba? So, ganun ang buhay. But, we have to what? Enjoy those times na binibigay ng Panginoon sa atin at gamitin natin sa kanyang kaluwalatian. Amen? So, that's it. And another thing, in chapter 12, verse number 1 to 8, we're not going to read this anymore. Again, the gift of life, we have to what? Delight and also remove those things na hindi dapat nating uh, gawin sa ating buhay. And another thing is to remember. Remember. That's the instruction. Means more than what? Think about God. It means what? Pay attention to. Consider with the intention of what they call obeying on God. Amen? And this is what they call the version of King Solomon. Na makikita po natin dito sa, if you can see here in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33. It says here, Ma- Matthew 6, 33. Sino nakamemorize nito? For God. Okay? But seek ye first. Galing ni Sister Marlene. Amen? But seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall what? Be added unto you. If you want to be blessed by God, simple. Obey God first and follow His will. Na, hindi naman natin pinag-usapan yung blessed na yung dami mong pera. Eh, kasi tao, yun, yun tayo lagi. Pera, pera. Doon tayo nagkakamali eh. Dapat maalis natin yun sa ating isipan. Dapat may kotse ako, yung lumilipad, yung gulong nasa taas. Oh. Dami mong iniisip sa buhay. But remember, it says here, how it is easy to neglect the Lord when you are caught up in the enjoyments of life and what they call opportunities in, in, of being a youth. And that is the problem sometimes. You're already uh, very successful and then... Everything is in you right now and you tend to forget God. Nagkakamali ka naman doon. Hey! Mga kaklase ko nga, most of them ay nasa ano sila ngayon eh? Nasa New Zealand. Kasi animal science kami dati. So they're working in a uh, big uh, company there nagpapagatas ng mga baka. Then, tinanong lang ako, saan, saan ka ngayon, brother? Uh, sir, Rilson, oh, dito ako sa Cambodia. Ha? Okay ba, John? Well, ganun yung mga sinasabi nila. But again, nakikita yung mga buhay nila. Okay. Lalaki ng mga sahod, pero puro utang. Puro uh, hirap pa rin sa pera. Bakit? Mga ano eh, Mahilig sa bisyo eh. Mahilig magsugal. Pag uwi ng Pilipinas, waldas lang ang pera. So, it's not good. We have to remember that everything God has given to us is very precious. Amen? And we have to uh, be a good steward na binibigay ng Diyos sa atin. Diyan tayo minsan kasi nagkakamali sa ating pong buhay. Now, let's continue here. It says here that we know the dark days and difficult evil days are coming. So we had better lay a good what? Spiritual foundation as early in life as possible. Binibigyan natin ng magandang pundasyon ng ating paglilingkod sa Panginoon kasi alam natin na sa Kanya ang kalooban ang lahat ng mga bagay ay magiging mabuti. Amen? Lay it all to God. So, during our youthful years, the sky is bright, but the time will come when there will be darkness and one storm 
after another. And that's life. But what are you going to do? When you can see those storms coming ahead. Iyak ka na lang? Nasa gilid ka na lang? No. Face it. Harapin po natin yun sa ating buhay. Tignan mo, nabusog sa preaching, no? In verses chapter 3 to uh, in verses 3 to 7. Now, we have to understand here, okay? But we're going not, uh, we're not going to tackle this anymore. Now, remember these instructions given to us by God. And I believe that sa ating mga buhay na paglilingkod sa Panginoon, makikita po natin mga bagay po na ito later on. And lastly, Verse number chapter 12 verse number 9 to 9 to 12 Life is an institution or life is a school So when you're in a school what learn your lessons Amen learn your lessons No Sa aking buhay minsan mga kapatid marami akong mga pagkakamali uh, during those days, yung mga kabataan ko pa, pag kinukorek ako, oh, nainis ako. Honestly, ganun ako before. But later, I found out, hindi eh. Kung kinukorek ako, dapat i-accept ko kasi mali ako. And I have to learn something from it. I did kukorek ko ng aking buhay, ayusin ko, and later on, maging maayos ang lahat. Okay. Nakuha niyo po mga kapatid. Amen? Amen? Now, minsan nga sa school, nakukurik ako. Uh, si, uh, si Teacher Milka nandito. Teacher Wilson, ito, oh. inaayos ko yan. Next time, pagbalik ko, mali pa. <laughs> the joke lang. Joke lang ka. So, I have to accept that. Kasi, sa bagay po nito, Wala kasi tayong pwede ipagmalaki. It is only by the grace of God. And if you are willing that somebody will teach you, you can learn from it. No, avoid po natin yung, ano, yung uh, pagiging, ano natin. Hindi ko nababanggitin. Uh, I hope maalis po natin yan sa ating pong puso. Amen? Someone has said that life is like an institution except that sometimes you don't know what lessons are until you have failed the examination. And that's true. And everybody has an examination that we must take. Can we pass it or not? God teaches us primarily from His Word, but He also teaches us through creation and what He call histories and various what lessons in life. Life is an institution. Now, Solomon explained here that the characteristics of his own work as a teacher of what? God's truth. First, in verse 9 here. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught that uh, he still uh, taught the people knowledge. Yea, ha, he have good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Number one, being wise. Now Solomon is uh, the wisest man who ever lived on earth. The king studied and explored many what? Subjects. And some of his conclusions he wrote down in Proverbs. A very well-known uh, incident that uh, took place here can be found in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse number 3 to 28. But we're not going to read that anymore. Have you remember that case, that incident? The two women 
who gave birth, right? They live in the same house and then one time, uh, and then one night while they were laying down, one of the, uh, uh, the, the other woman uh, was able to, uh, how, how do you call it? To diagonize the, uh, the, her baby. Not diagonize. You know diagonize? Huh? Yung na ano niya na dagdaganan yung bata so namatay. And then ang ginawa nitong mother na ito, pumunta siya sa kabila kwarto at kinuha na yung baby ng isang bat uh, na isang uh, mother na buhay. Pinalit niya yung kanyang anak na patay. So, what happened here is that both women faced uh, King Solomon and then King Solomon uh, made a very wise judgment during those days. He said, give me the sword and I will cut the baby into pieces. I mean, uh, halves. I will give the other one to this woman and the other half to this woman. And then of course, the, the real mother said, okay, just give it to her. And let her uh, get the child. But the other woman, who is not the real one, said, okay, uh, just uh, divide the baby. And then King Solomon said, okay, you give this uh, child to the real mother. So it became very famous in the kingdom what King Solomon uh, made during those days. He was uh, very wise. But again, the wisdom that he had uh, during those days came from God. Being wise. Another thing, orderly. Verse 9. After studying a matter, he weighed his conclusions carefully and then arranged them in an orderly fashion. His whole, ap uh, whole approach was certainly scientific. We may not see the, this pattern behind his arrangement, but it is what? There, just the same. Now, uh, Solomon sought to be what? Careful in his teaching. So he used what he called acceptable words. Kaya nga, sino ba namang hindi mainlove kay uh, King Solomon? Pamagsalita, ang lalang, deep things eh. But he used acceptable words. This means pleasing or what he called gracious words that would win the attention to his listeners and readers. Amen? Life is an institution and we can learn different things from it. All you have to do is to be humble. Amen? Because the more we exalt ourselves, the more we say that we are good and nobody can correct us, hey, I will tell you, nothing will happen on you. Hey, this is our nature. Whether you like it or not. Pag nakokorekt tayo, parang ayaw natin. Yes. Parang ayaw natin. But hey, Try to kneel down and ask God's wisdom. And He will give it to you. He always used upright words of truth in Proverbs chapter 8, verse number 6 to 11. Let's proceed our body in please. Proverbs chapter 8, verses number 6 to 11. Here, for I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak, of tr uh, speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. For uh, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all 
plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, amen? And not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom it is better, uh, is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Like our Lord Jesus Christ, the king was able to combine both grace and truth together. Orderly. And lastly, the word inspired. Amen? Verse 11. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies which are given from the shepherd. Inspired. Here we can see here that King Solomon claimed that his words were inspired, given by God, the one shepherd. Inspiration was the special miracle ministry of the Holy Spirit that enabled the men of God to write the word of God as God wanted it written. And I believe that it is complete and without error. Do you believe in that? In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16 to 17. We will end up here. All scripture is what? Given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine. Take note that those are strong words. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, Unto all good works. And that is the blessing from the word of God. That's why every time we hear the word of God. Listen to me very carefully. Sometimes it's very painful. Especially if we can hear those uh, right shots towards us. But again, that is a blessing. We must not get mad from the word of God. That is being preached to us. Instead, we must be thankful and receive it with a joy in our hearts. That's the word of God. And another thing here. In 2 Peter chapter 1. 20 to 21. Knowing this first. That no prophecy. Of the scripture. Is of any what. Private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time. By the will of men. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, what I was studying uh, right now, uh, binabasa ko po yung apokripa. Oh, tiyo, naniniwala ko sa apokripa. Hindi ah, binabasa ko lang to, uh, to have more uh, information. Pero hindi ko ipipreach yan dito. Now, binabasa ko, iba talaga eh. Iba yung dating niya sa the Word of God na binabasa natin eh. Uh, walang power. Walang power. Kasi par parang ano siya eh. More on uh, stories. Pagbabasahin nyo yan. Uh, Nakasave ko yan dito. Uh, Pinag-aaralan ko lang naman yan. Pinag-aaralan ko yan. And uh, by the grace of God, I can compare. Kung bakit hindi talaga isinama ang apokripa. Because uh, we have to understand that ang mga books na ito, mga sulat na ito ay hindi siya makikita doon sa vicinity na kung saan doon nagkaroon ng uh, gospel during those days. And also, hindi siya in as an inspired word of God. So, we have to understand here another thing that he compared his words to goals and nails. Now, the meaning here is that both of which are necessary or important if people are to learn God's truth. The goals, 
produce the people to pay attention and what to pursue the truth and that must be our attitude studying the word of god that's why the bible tells us study to show thyself one approve unto god hindi lang po tayo accept na accept accept na accept accept na accept receive nang receive without knowing without studying on it and that is the problem most of the time what that is happening right now in our baptist circle pakinig na lang ng pakinig hindi na pinag-aaral ang salita ng diyos that's why later on they what they were what They were taken astray. They were now moved into different direction instead of moving towards God. They're uh, becoming farther and farther right now instead of becoming closer and closer to God. And we have to um, contend for it. For us who know the truth, we have to share it to some of our friends. Anong kinakahiya natin? Are we scared? Are we afraid that these uh, people might uh, persecute us? Because they are close to us? No way! We have to stand for the truth. Pambihira. First fruit. Tapos mag meses meses ngayon, magsusulisit for camp. Pambihira. Kala ko ba pinagpala yung mga first fruit na yan? Nakakainis eh. Kasi nakakalungkot eh. Pinaglolo ko lang. Another thing here, nails. It means give them something on which to hang what they have what learn. So it means here that good teaching requires both. The students must be motivated to study and the instructors must be able to what? Nail things down so that the lessons well, will have sense. Amen. Dapat yun eh. Tapos magpost tayo ng about first fruit Lesson about uh, transfer membership, tatawanan. Tapos ngayon, magsusulisit ng for camp kasi walang pang camp. Mabira. So sad. Amen? Pinapanganandakan sa pulpito. Ibabalik sa'yo na. The highest form of giving. Ano yan? Kasi ang Bible kasi hindi mo naman kinakailangan ng ibang interpretation nene. Eh. Just read the Word of God thoroughly. Ask God's wisdom, and God will reveal those truths in His Word. Minagawang kasi ibang interpretation kumita lang. As life is an institution, we must be humble and learn. In everything we can. Our textbook here. This is the Bible. And the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Amen. <coughs> John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. So the Spirit can be gifted, can be used, uh, can use what we call gifted human teachers to what? Instruct us. But he longs to teach us personally from his word. But we're not going to read that anymore. So there are always new lessons to learn and examinations to face in life as we seek to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So remember these things. 
Remember the meaning of life. Amen. Life is challenging. Life is a gift. And life is an institution. May God bless His word. And let us.